Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today on this mini-sode, we're going to be looking at Her Majesty's Royal Coven. This is by Juno Dawson. Up front, I'm just going to let you know this book did not work for me, and it was a huge disappointment. This is one I just kind of, I decided to pick up. I did a little research on it before, and I was like, this sounds perfect, like right up my alley, and it fell super flat for me. So let me tell you about the summary first. I'm going to tell you about our author, Juno Dawson, and then we're going to move on to my thoughts and why I had a problem with this novel. This is about four girls who took an oath to join Her Majesty's Royal Coven, so HR, uh, HMRC. I always get the, these acronyms mixed up. Uh, so the four of them, their names are Leonie, we have Neve, Helena, and Elle. They all joined up in this, uh, the HMRC was established around the time that Queen Elizabeth I was around, so 16th century. And um, so they are still kind of healing from the Civil War that happened, and Helena, one of the girls, has now taken up the helm to run HRMC. All of the girls are kind of at different points in their life right now, dealing with just a whole host of different things. So we have Leonie, she's living with her girlfriend, and she's established a whole other coven called the Diaspora. And this kind of ended up being like a big stake in Helena's heart because she just left the HRMC, which is kind of a big deal. And then we have Elle, who's trying to pretend to be like this housewife. She is. Uh, she has a daughter named Holly. Um, and they just kind of are running their life, trying to be like regular people, I guess, or they're uh, mundane. So trying to live that life, like uh, her Elle's husband is is a mundane, has no idea that she's technically a witch. And then we have Neve, who's a practicing like vet for the country. She is very precious. She's a pretty powerful witch and she's uh, dealing with the death of one of uh, one of her husbands, she's got this guy in her life, not really a romantic partner, more of a friend, but she's kind of in an in-between spot, still trying to heal and whatnot. And then we have our last character, Helena, who is running HRMC right now, very bureaucratic, trying to make everything right, do everything the right way, uh, because there was this, not an omen, but I guess there is an omen that's told about this Leviathan that's going to wake up. And that's where the story starts to begin, is that they find this child who might be the undoing of everything ever. And they're like, it's a kid. So it's kind of the basic of the story. And not just that. Okay, so I might have simplified it. So we have like the specific tenets of the coven that Helena is desperately trying to keep in place. But then there's new things that are starting to, you know, come to play that might change things. And all of the witches are kind of at odds with each other. Maybe not all of them. Actually, it's really just the three of them against Helena. Okay, so that's kind of the basis of this story. It kind of reminded me, it was like, I wanted something that had sisterhood, friendship, a little more contemporary, but also the witchy element was really great. Plus, it was LGBTQ plus friendly. Uh, lots of awesome themes here about fem feminism, uh, how to deal with things like warning. There is a lot in here about like transphobia, uh, transmisogyny, lots of that stuff. So I wanted something that was a little more enlightening and really followed just kind of my ideology and had witches. Of course I did. So before I talk about why I didn't like this book, which was a big shock to me, let me tell you about Juno Dawson. So Juno Dawson has been writing a lot of queer books. She lives in England. So some of the books that she's written is this book is gay. Uh, she's also written like the gender games, the good doctor, a lot. I mean, seriously, a, a lot of different novels over the years. She's also transgendered. So she likes to put a lot of her experiences into her novels. And this is her um, trilogy, Her Majesty's Roy Royal Coven. So I love that we have not only um, inclusivity in this book, but also an author who has experiences that is trying to tell kind of bits of her story in here. So why did I not like this novel? I'm just going to cut right into the thick of this. In a lot of ways, this book is still very divisive to the LGBTQ community. It follows a very strict set of binary rules. 
So it kind of begs the question, like, what does it mean to be a man, a woman? Is that these culturally set norms that we've put on ourselves, all these societal norms? Is it emotional? Is it biological? What does that mean? And this got very messy, and I feel like it didn't address the broader point that gender and expression is a huge scale, and people kind of fall all across it. It was very black and white, male versus female, and evil and good. So very just distinct lines that were drawn. And for me, I just don't really feel like it was very progressive or thoughtful in that regard. So as somebody who is a part of the LGBTQ plus community, I struggled a very, very long time with my sexual identity and it felt exclusive to somebody like me. So there's a scene in the book where they're talking about Theo, who's our trans girl in the story, and they get this vision and Theo is very, very sure that she's a girl, which I think, by the way, that's really great. And then we move on to the rest of the witches. They're discussing like, hey, did you know that you were a girl? And then a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, I knew I was a girl. Like, I was really sure about that. And for them, that's really great. But that's not the case for everybody. And it sure wasn't necessarily for me. Being able to strongly identify and relate to being female was just not something that was for me. I personally am not comfortable with binary gender norms or how those things are necessarily defined. I think your internal journey is yours and however you express that is fine and whatever that means for you, but having that identity and having to categorize, it brings a lot of issues. And I think this book didn't do that very well. Another thing, too, just on a rational level, it seems really strange to me that this coven uh, has never run into a trans witch before. So a big part of this story is that we have Theo, who was born with male genitalia and is a girl. She is trans and is a girl. And so the problem is, is that Helena is trying, and I'm sorry, this isn't really a spoiler. This is kind of like towards the middle of the book, but Helena just is not okay with this. She's basically, a, she's a turf. Um, she, you know, she's all about women and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, Theo is a boy. And, um, so it just seems really strange that this coven has never run into somebody like Theo before. Granted, I understand. So the coven was created in the 16th century in the UK, and maybe they follow the same sort of rules. That's kind of what it seems like. But they seem to at least be slightly ahead of the times versus the normies of the world. Like, they're open to the gay community. There's a couple elder witches in there that... You know, they have partners, same-sex partners. I, I don't know about the warlock cabal, if they do, but I'm guessing they probably do. But also, they don't really even identify, like, what it means to be a witch, because it sounds like it's strictly genitalia, which, again, is problematic in this whole thing, because that that's what it seems like to me, is, like, they're not covering the, the whole spectrum here. And Helena specifically says she talks about genitalia, and it's like, okay, anyway, moving on. We also have Annie, who's an oracle, and they mention that she's met somebody like Dracula in her lifetime. She's an old, old witch, and yet still, she's met Dracula, but no trans witches? Come on. And I know this is really long, but Helena our head of the HRMC is very adamant about keeping things the way they have been um, and keeping the structure of the coven the way, maybe not the way it has been forever, but like progressing in other ways. And there's a really cool line in there that talks about um, one of the other friends. I can't remember if it's Neve or Elle. Uh, they're talking about how nature and um, just the force of nature and the will of nature is never this consistent, like it's constantly changing and flowing and flex, fluctuating and things morph and whatever. And still Helena just brushes this thing off. She's like, nope, that's not how it works. But Helena is specifically a nature witch. So I'm like somebody who 
is friends and has the sisterhood, like a big, strong bond with these other witches who is attuned to nature, who is younger and has had these lessons and hopefully is more well taught, cannot see or fathom anything. Like she is just so stubborn, which in turn makes her a very cartoonish villain, like for no reason except for the fact that she's a turf. And that's it. But we don't get a true relationship, like why did the sisterhood happen? Um, what was the structure? And like, why did they bond? What was their falling out? You know, we just kind of get that Helena is now officially evil. So it just felt sloppy to me. So this leads me to describing the characters. And I'll touch more about that when I talk about Leonie. So this is another aspect of this book that I think is really detrimental. First, we have Neve. She is kind of like the healer. She goes around and heals people. She's got a, a lot of really cool lines in this book, and she's kind of our spotlit character. She's definitely a main, like, she's definitely the one that's focused on the most. And Theo, so she kind of takes Theo on and adopts her because they just find Theo, and they're keeping an eye on her. But Neve, ten Neve bonds with Theo, and it's really precious and cute. But Neve has this really cool way of looking at the world and she wants to use her powers for the better of everything. She wants to just promote good. And in some ways you might disagree with what she's saying, but I liked what was said with how she used her powers. She's a very powerful witch. Then we have Elle. And the problem is I felt like I forgot about Elle a lot, except in regards to her daughter, Holly, so Holly is just coming into herself. She's just realizing she's a witch. And there's parts in this that are really strong, especially like mother-daughter, and it's really cute. But a lot of the times I, I would be like, who's Elle again? <laughs> Which is horrible. So some of these characters just didn't have very many distinguishable features or traits. Sometimes I felt like they talked the same or interacted with other people the same way. So I was like, oh God, which one is this? So I got a little confused sometimes, except when in their relationship with specific people. I would have to backtrack a lot sometimes with these characters and be like, okay, so Elle's talking here, but sometimes I would think it was Neve or I would think it was Leone, but you know, it wasn't. Anyway, so the other character that I felt like definitely fell off the map and needs some assistance is Leone. So Leonie's character posed a pretty large problem for me too, and here's why. So I love representation in pop culture and books, and here's the problem that I'm having is that sometimes those characters are then defined only by those traits, and I think this is actually what's happening with Leonie. So Leonie is a black lesbian who's decided to create her own coven diaspora as like an alternate to the HRMC for people of color. And honestly, I think that's killer. It's very cool. Unfortunately, I do think there are parts. So there's like, she does this big lengthy speech towards the beginning of the book. And I think it's lacking in research. Uh, there are a lot of stereotypes that are used to define Leonie, such as like her backstory, her parents, just the character type itself. Quite frankly, I feel like she's honestly just thrown in there just for diversity's sake. Because it's like, Leonie's coven cannot be the only coven out there that is for people of color. And then where are all of the other sisterhoods around the world? There have to be other established places. I mean, we have a lot of Indian influence in the UK. How freaking cool would it be to have some sort of sisterhood like that integrated and communicating with like the HRMC or Leone's whole thing. And not only that, that would actually be a huge representation for people who are not just on the binary spectrum because there are plenty of gods and myths that are, uh, they span all kinds of gender expression. There's just a lot of cool things that could have happened, but it still f felt very Eurocentric and still not very inclusive, which is so weird. It's like they were putting all of these things that you would ordinarily see in something that would represent diversity, but in turn, it ended up being a very 
white European lens, which is wild to me. So that's so ultimately, those are kind of my problems with this book. So I think there are some good things about this book. I do wish that there was more magic elements, witchy elements to kind of tone down some of the political charged aspects of this book. These messages are important. Like I do appreciate the learning more and seeing more of like Theo's perspective, what it's like for her to live and then also have people think she is literally like the ultimate evil because of who she wants to be. Those themes are incredibly important and they need to be told, but it fails to talk about all of the other parts about gender expression. And this is the problem I'm seeing a lot. And I just don't want this to be the representation for all of the LGBTQ plus community and their experiences. So that is the end of my diatribe here. If you have made it this far, thank you for listening. It means a whole lot. Um, ultimately, I probably give this book about like a 2.5. I do enjoy seeing like people standing up for other people. And I do like the magic system. I do love Theo's perspective. And I love uh, found family and what that looks like in different places. Uh, so I, there was a few things clearly I didn't like. I might pick up the sequel because it has higher ratings than this one. So uh, if you are looking for a LGBTQ plus witchy kind of book give this one a shot let me know what you think because I could be I could be wrong I'm very open to that and I I'm open to discussion so definitely let me know what you think and and, and comment on your favorite listening app or over here on YouTube so even though this is technically not really a dark book it has witches we have a lot of witchy books here over on dark side of the library so we always try to present them to you because we just love witchy books so if you are looking for more dark creepy reads make sure to check out our show notes on darksideoflibrary.com or join us on our socials and to join our shopping channel over on amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library if you do like the halloween aesthetic we're going to be doing a lot more live streaming over there so you'll see a lot of cool stuff so make sure to follow, subscribe if you do love dark stuff, horror, spooky stuff, psychological thrillers. We tend to provide all of the information you could possibly need. Thanks so much for listening. Have a creeptastic week.